Hey man, do you guys fill these BCA float cylinders? We sure do. Cool. Got a new one here? Yeah. All right, cool. It's just going to take like 10 to 15 minutes, all right? Yeah. All right, great. Hi guys, this is Dane from Backcountry Access, and today I'm going to go through our cylinder refill process. Uh, for both the 1.0 and the 2.0 system. Uh, the 1.0 system being the original system that we've had out in the market for quite a long time now. So we're just gonna go through the process of replacing the O-rings and then filling the cylinders using scuba tanks and also go through some of the options that you have if you wanna be a refill center. The components of the float 1.0 and 2.0 system are the same. Here we have our fill port, the pressure gauge, our air hose connection, our trigger pin, and then the trigger valve stem. On the 1.0 system, we're gonna be filling to 2700 PSI. 2.0 cylinder, we're gonna be filling to 3000 PSI. The BCA cylinders are filled using compressed air, and this is dry, scuba grade, quality air. We don't wanna be filling it with CO2 or compressed nitrogen. Now, when a customer walks into your shop requesting a refill, uh, one thing you're going to want to look for is whether the cylinder was deployed. Uh, you want to know if the cylinder leaked. Generally a good indication that the cylinder was deployed is when the cylinder valve stem is up. So you'll see that it's poking up above the uh, housing here. But when somebody comes in with say a new cylinder or a cylinder that was filled and then not deployed but leaked down, this valve stem will be down so you'll see that it's completely flush. In that case you want to know okay if it's brand new then you can just hook up the cylinder right away. The o-ring is already in there and it's ready to fill. If it's not a new cylinder and the valve stem is down like there most likely it's leaked down in which case just replacing the o-rings can often fix that. Once the uh, cylinder is empty which you always want to make sure that the cylinder is empty before you start pulling anything apart. And you can generally see that by the gauge here. So just double check that before you do anything extra. And first step is gonna be removing the screws, the hex screws here on the top of the cylinder. So once you've removed the hex screws, you're going to need to get to that trigger valve stem. Um, in order to do that, you can just pull the housing out, in which case the valve stem is going to come with it. Or if you want to get that housing off um, separated from the valve stem, you're going to want to pull on this trigger pin here, and that will allow you to pull the housing off and separate it from the valve stem here. You'll just pull that out and we're going to just be working with this piece. You'll notice that the cylinder valve stem here has the o-ring that was originally down here in this groove is now moved up into this fatter part of the valve stem and we're going to re be replacing this small o-ring. Uh, the other o-rings you see on this valve stem do not need, need to be replaced. Um, maybe periodically uh, lubed with some grease if in the case that it seems like they're getting really dry. Um, using a, a dental pick, you can remove the old O-ring. You don't want to, uh, you want to be careful, make sure you don't scratch the, the valve stem. Every time you refill a cylinder, we want to get that small O-ring replaced. So I'll grab a new O-ring. Now that I have a new small O-ring, going to give it a little bit of grease, also help with uh, the overall seal. So put a little bit of grease on my finger here, and I'm just gonna massage it into the O-ring. And now just need to pop this O-ring back into this little groove here. So usually the best way to do that is just kind of placing the valve stem bottom of it right into the O-ring and then just applying some pressure so that it pops in. I'll usually kind of massage some grease around it just so that it's nice and even. I replace this valve stem back into the cylinder. We're going to go with the small o ring uh, in first, just the way that it came out. So push it down all the way. In the case that a cylinder has leaked, you're going to want to take an extra step, which is 
replacing the o-ring that goes between the head and the neck of the cylinder you should be able to easily unscrew the head of the cylinder from the bottle without using any tools once we have the cylinder and the head separated we're going to remove this larger o-ring which generally you can just use the dental pick like that will take a new o-ring which uh, these larger o-rings you can contact BCA and we'll be happy to send you extras if you need them take a decent amount of grease just like with the smaller o-ring apply it generally what I'll do is just place this o-ring into the groove on the cylinder make sure it sits in there nicely and make sure that it's good to make sure that all of this is is relatively clean generally we'll use a, a q-tip or just um, you know a clean rag or something sometimes if you get contamination in here dirt hair stuff like that it can impact the effectiveness of the cylinder holding pressure so like that we'll just get that o-ring in place and screw the head back on and it should go relatively easy if not then most likely you're you have the threads crossed so just make sure that it's going on there really easy and then at the end I like to tighten it, give it a good um, tightening but no tools are required. So now that we've replaced the large o-ring between the head and the neck of the cylinder and the o-ring on the valve stem, I'm just going to go ahead and put everything else back together. Use my Allen wrench here to screw these down. Generally I'll kind of loosely tighten them down and then once they're all the way in there, tighten them up. Now, hook the cylinder up to fill.